You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thank you for joining us on a very special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And I am very pleased and honored to have our wonderful mayor, Mr. Scott Slifka, joining us on this show. Thank you. And also my good friend and barrister of justice and new town councilman, <laughs> Mr. Chris Williams. <laughs> thank you. And you're in for a treat. We're all in for a treat tonight. It is going to be Battle of the Blue and Red Wines. Slightly political, but we're going to have fun doing it. That's as political as we're going to get, though. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's as, as far as we're going to take it. But I think it's going to be interesting. We have some interesting wines here, and I think both our guests uh, are going to be great wine tasters to enjoy with us. If not interesting but, ourselves. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll also be talking about the Mayor's Ball, which is coming up in May, and uh, that's always a, a, a great time for everybody, and I'm glad we're finally going to be able to attend it this year. Oh, wonderful. It hasn't worked the last couple of years uh, for our schedules, but we're looking forward to it. Great. Thank you. So, uh, Let's get right into it. All right, we're going to start off with some of the blue labels. Uh, I brought tonight a Vino Verde, which is a Portuguese varietal. Uh, actually, it's a Portuguese style. Um, there are four different varietals that are blended into this. Uh, typically, the Portuguese will put uh, Alvarino, which is similar to the Spanish Albarino white grape. Uh, but there's none of that in this Vino Verde. Uh, there's four other varietals. Um, it's an interesting blend. Go ahead and try this. Okay. When you look at this, You'll notice that the wine actually has a little bit of effervescence it does, to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, this is, they can't call this a sparkling wine. It's not like a cava or uh, the Prosecco or champagne. Uh, what the winemaker has done though, is he's added a little bit of CO2 into this. And it just, it makes it a little more refresh, refreshing, a little light, a lot of citrus with this. I mean, I've had Vino Verdes before. I'm sure you have, Scott, also. There is a little- I, I will pretend that okay. I know exactly <laughs> what I was thinking when I had it. Yes. I like the little sparkle. It's sort of like a good aperitif, I think, before you start maybe dinner. It's very refreshing. You're sitting out in your patio in the summertime or spring. This is a really a... It's a great summertime wine. Yeah, it's great for picnics. It's, um, you know, it's got, I want to say it's it's priced right, too. It's this They is, generally are, correct? Yeah. I think they're all under Vino Verdes like 12 are, bucks on that. Time. Well, actually, no, they, they're usually under 10. Oh, wow. Now, there's a second scale of Vino Verde, and there's, there's some winemakers who want to, to create a second category and call them Super Verdes. And those are around 20 bucks. Uh, but this one is in that lower price range. It's, it's in the you know, five to eight dollar range. So it's very affordable. Um, so for a good blue bottle, it's, it's very affordable. It's, absolutely. Uh, it's sort of right on that cuff of uh, you know, being affordable to everybody. It's not wine, just wine for the people. I see the analogy here. Yes. <laughs> wine for the, the people. For the people. Yeah. It's good for it's the people. A little more exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> not that much more exclusive. Yeah. This, this is a, it really tastes like grapefruit in this. Yeah, you, know, you get a lot of citrus with this. And with the summer coming, I can see uh, having this with maybe some oysters. Mm -hmm. You know, nice weather. Shellfish was a, one of the recommended pairings for this. So, that, yeah, that would go fantastic with it. I think it's one of those kind of whites, though, that needs to be a little chilled. If it's a little warm, I think it might. I'd agree with like that. grapefruit juice a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I had this in the car for a few hours, so it warmed up a little bit. I apologize. But. <laughs> well, it's, it's still packing the effervescence is what mm -hmm. you're talking about, which obviously is important if, this is what, if you're going for this type of wine for in the spring or summer. I, this I thought be... I noticed a hint of mass pike. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> so this is actually the most popular Vino Verde in the world. Uh, I, I don't, so if you're looking for it here in Connecticut, I don't think you'll have a problem finding it. It's got excellent distribution, uh, and this is worldwide sales. Uh, this particular <laughs> label has outsells every other Vino Verde. And this so is under $10, I believe, because I think yeah. I've had this too, but I couldn't remember what the price point was. Yeah, in between 5 and $8, depending on where you're buying it. Can I ask a dumb question? Is this something that's even available the rest of the year? Yeah, Vino Verde is usually on the shelf. You see it year-round, and that's due in part to the quantity that they produce. You know, if, you've, if you find a wine that has a very small uh, number of cases produced, it can run out very quickly. Uh, but if you're looking for something like Yellowtail, they make 8 million cases sure, of yeah. that, you're never going to run out of it. 
you'll always find that. And like I said, this is the kind of wine if you're going to have a big party with more than 10, 12 people and you want to start off on the lighter mm -hmm. side. I think the alcohol content is a little lower on a Vino Verde it's, too. This is 10%. 10%. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good start. It's a good start yeah. to a, an evening. Um, generally, Bubbles works for us, but in the springtime, sometimes a Vino Verde will be just as good. And the other thing to keep in mind is um, this is a, a wine that's meant to be consumed almost immediately. Uh, when, when people say Vino Verde, it, it really translates into a green wine. Uh, and the, the green refers to young. You want to, it's a young wine and you want to drink it young. You don't want to store this for more than a year. So if, you know, if, you're, if you're stocking up on it, make sure you're going to be serving a lot of guests and <laughs> yeah, not I, keeping I, it for a couple of years. I'm going to guess that whoever's stocking up on Vino Verde is doing it because they have a lot of parties and yeah. they drink a lot. Because yeah. it's not one that you would stock up a lot on. So uh, I'm familiar with it, so I have a little bias. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to give that a thumbs up. I'm going to give that a thumbs up for the blue label. I give it a big thumbs up. Uh, my wife and I are drinking a lot of this now. It's, it's become one of our instant favorites. I guess I'm bound by the blue label. To give Not it at all. Up, but I actually <laughs> would give it that if it was a blind test. So. I really enjoyed it. Thumbs up. Bipartisanship. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good thing. We're going to disappoint all you right. because this is usually how it goes. That's perfectly <laughs> fine. That's perfectly fine. All right. That's a great first start there, Jim. Yeah. Oh, is the next on. one me? The next one is me. You've, I'm got, sorry. The, you've got I, the other blue label. I did. I apologize for that. So we're going with a Sauveron Blue Ribbon winner, Blue Label 2012, Chateau Sauveron. It's a Napa Valley uh, blend. It is a very, the vineyard's been around for about 60 years. They produce a lot of metal winning wines, um, whether they're Cabs or the Merlots. This is a combination of several different blends in this particular wine. It's supposed to be extremely smooth. This is one of my wine collection, uh, wine club wines that I get mailed to me. So I usually get several bottles of the same varietal. I have not had this one yet. Um, I actually just got this shipment maybe a month or two ago, and I've been saving it for this show. When I saw the, the blue label and I realized it was a blue ribbon winner, I said, well, I know what show this is going to be <laughs> there on. You go. <laughs> so in, in theory, this probably should have opened up a little bit more <clears throat> than we have tonight. Um, it's been only opened up for the last half hour, but I think a good California blend generally can be drunk pretty much pretty quickly once you open it up. Beautiful color. It's got a sort of a ruby garnet color. You get a little black licorice with that and uh, maybe some currant. I get the currant, I get the little bit of a licorice and I notice it doesn't, it's not a powerful red. It doesn't sit on your tongue. It's not overpowered. It sort of hits the back roof of your mm -hmm. mouth more than it does your tongue. And it kind of fades away. Yeah. It does. And, you know, you know, you guys are watching this show in the springtime. Um, this is the kind of red, especially a California blend, where you, you want a powerful wine, but not too powerful where it's going to take over the food that you're eating this time of year, whether it's burgers, something light on the grill. Um, we have some, you probably can't see it on camera, we have some hot sausages, some uh, uh, salami, some cheeses. That's the kind of thing that a good California blend really goes well with. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on this? I think it's very good. I, uh, you know, I also could see it pairing well with chocolate. You know, I, I, you know maybe a dark chocolate. I, I can see a, a, a dark chocolate pairing with this. I mean, it's not Valentine's Day. I, I would have brought some chocolate in, but I never thought of that. <laughs> but, think uh, of romance. Take, uh, yes. take it easy, Bob. All right. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting because uh, there's actually pretty good legs in this. I can see in Scott's glass that there's still lingering after effects of this wine. Yeah, those are great legs. Which means, great body. yeah, it has great body. It certainly has a very pleasant taste. There's nothing astringent about this wine at all. This particular wine, if you are interested in it, uh, do some searching online. Just press the uh, label in, uh, press that in. You'll come up with several California wine clubs that offer this. Usually it's between $13.99 and $16.99 a bottle, which is certainly a, for, I think, this quality. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very reasonable price. And that's the price most people are comfortable with. Yeah. So, Bob, when you said, uh, you open this and said it, you said it should sit for more than a half hour. How long should it sit? I think generally we like stuff open for at least an hour sometimes. Well, if, you know, if, yeah, if you're letting it breathe just in the bottle like that, you, you, the longer you give it, the, the more oxygen is going to work in. Uh, but if you're decanting, that gets a lot of oxygen into the wine right away. Uh, so in, in that case, you don't have to let it breathe as long. Uh, Bob and I both have a decanter that's kind of really wide at the bottom. And that, what that does is that gives you a huge surface to have oxygen interact with the wine. So it breathes oh. very quickly. 
uh, in a decanter like that. I will say, and Scott, you probably you've noticed this when you go out to the many fine restaurants we have here in town. Almost every night. Right. <laughs> that, uh, you know, you go to some of the nice restaurants and they, you get a bottle of wine, and obviously you're paying the markup. But sometimes they open that bottle up right in front of you, and some of those wines really should be opened up earlier and mm -hmm. breathe a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's one of those little pet peeves of mine where you're going to buy an expensive bottle at a nice restaurant, but they open it up literally right there at the table, and you really are losing a little bit of the flavor. Well, you, you can't water. ask to have it decanted. Uh, not every restaurant will have a decanter, but if they do, uh, and, and you ask, you, you say, you know, this, this wine needs to breathe a little more, can you bring the decanter over? Uh, they're happy to do that for yeah, you. Yeah, and that's the table that has the snob flavor <laughs> right, right on it. So you pretty much know that, that you've asked for that. I, you know, I, I will say, in my experience, it has actually worked the exact opposite, where you know, I've asked a couple of questions like that or asked for a little special service, and all of a sudden the restaurant owner is taking much better care of me than he would have previously. Maybe he brings over an extra glass of wine for me to sample something that he's trying to bring into the restaurant or wants my opinion on something. Or he so. thought you were one of the reviewers for the Hartford Current. And Could be. He's just trying to bump you up there for a good review. <laughs> I wanted but. a kid that Chris has recently learned that as soon as you're elected to the town council, immediately bottles are decanted as you walk into the restaurant. But it's true. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on social media. That this is what we I was going to say, that, that hasn't been my experience. But <laughs> Nor mine. Uh, you got to pass that ordinance. <laughs> Well, that'll be up to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say, because I just opened this up and I've not had this one before, I'm pretty pleased with that selection. And when you are in a wine club, you never know what you're going to get. You mm -hmm. let the, the people who are running the wine club send it to you after you give them some of your specifics, which I would recommend joining a wine club for some of the novices because it's a good way to try different wines. But I, I like that a lot. I think it's a really pleasant, easy to drink red. Yeah, I'm giving that a thumbs up. Yeah. Same here. I agree with that assessment. And did you, you said this was a smaller family vineyard? Yeah, it's a, uh, the Chateau Sauvron in Napa has been around for about 60 years. They make a lot of different wines. They make Merlots, they make Cabs. Um, but this one is sort of a combination of some of their award-winning mm -hmm. single grape wines. And uh, this one was a blue ribbon winner. So. so You would not know it from my incredible commentary on the wines here, but I did go to Napa a couple years ago and... The one thing I say I took away from it was an appreciation for the smaller vineyards sure. that I know otherwise, never otherwise would have been exposed to. And, and when you went to this, visit the slightly larger, more corporate ones, there was a very big difference in the, in the taste, which I'm sure is an obvious thing to most people in wine, but it's one it was eye-opening for me. So sure. I hear you talk about a vineyard like that, immediately I'm interested. Did you notice that they <clears throat> took better care of you at the smaller vineyards? Or did you oh, it's very personal. personal. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. They, and, they, and now with their, you know, their market, they follow up. We have one vineyard that we quite liked that you know, emails all the time. We've ordered from them you know, since then, and you almost feel like you've established a, a relationship yeah. where, you know, otherwise it's, you're just totally anonymous. It's, it's a nice feeling. And that's Especially a benefit of, of the wine clubs because you'll get stuff from California, which they sort of specialize in getting, they work on relationships with the smaller vineyards. So you're getting stuff that you might not be able to get right. locally. So it's, it's a good way to expose yourself to some of the smaller vineyards mm -hmm. in wine. And they're really not that expensive to join a, mm -hmm. a moderately priced wine club. So. All right, so we're off to a great start. Yeah, we've covered the blue side. We've got two winners. All right, well. Um, did you want to discuss the mayor's ball? Uh, well, absolutely. Absolutely. I was going to wait till we had a little bit more drinking going okay. on. All right. But, uh, yeah, the, Scott, if you want to fill us in a little bit on the mayor's ball this year, sure, is there anything special uh, going on? Well, it's, well, it's my last one. Uh, because yes. I don't know if that's special for people buying tickets, but it's, <laughs> it's special at least for me and my, my family. But it'll be on May 14th. Uh, it starts roughly 6 o'clock. We're, we're taping this here at uh, Town Hall in West Hartford, and it is – taking place just down the hall from us, uh, begins inside and then transitions outside under a tent. It's a practice we've had for the last few years. It's become a, a great party here in, in the center. Uh, great restaurants from the center are involved, particularly Max's, and uh, the, it benefits the, uh, the bridge. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, not the bridge. My gosh, I'm embarrassed. That was the other ball. Uh, it's <laughs> There's the so many balls in West Hartford. We can't help it. It, it. it benefits the, uh, the, pl the Playhouse on Park and um, now the Town of Caris Fund. We have some changes over the years, which is the town charity, essentially, is a charitable arm of the town that enables us to help people in all sorts of different forms of need. Uh, so it's very uh, flexible that way and a great thing. I'm really glad we brought those two things together finally. It'll be a wonderful, fun night. The weather has always cooperated. It has. And uh, have a, um, you know, you're, you're helping a great cause, as always. It is. I'm just, it's unfortunate it'll be your, your last one as the mayor. But uh, you still well, it depends on your matter of your opinion. But, uh, so <laughs> well, yes, not, not pointing to Chris. Yeah. Say that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Mr. May, I also think it's it's a wonderful thing because it does benefit West Hartford, and I think it is a special mayor's ball because you know it is your last one as mayor. So uh, I would encourage all residents to to go um, and support the cause, and uh, you know it is a special thing. 
uh, for that reason. Thank you. Well, then the, actually, the, we should say the most special thing is it'll be your first one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. After all these years, we finally are going to be able to attend. We're going to have a table, I think, with uh, some of the staff at WHC TV. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, you can stop by and say hi to Bobby P or maybe Jim. And, uh, you know, we'll give you some pointers. <laughs> probably not. We're, we're probably just right, so that's what it comes down to. But uh, I'm looking for, forward to it. I'm well, thank you. We, we appreciate the plug. Thank you. That's part of the reason we do this show is to, to help the community uh, get word out about their events or their products and services. And I, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't state the obvious, which is the tickets are going on sale now. You can get an early discount for buying a table now up through, I think it's roughly mid-April, and you can go to uh, mayorscharityball.org, and mm -hmm. it'll be very easy to process. Very exciting and another opportunity to have probably some good wine and some good food. Indeed, yeah, absolutely. So speaking of good wine, Jim, do you want me to go with my next one? Yes. You want me to go with go mine ahead, first? Jim. All right. We're going with another wine club selection, and this is, this is going to be an interesting one. It's the Gijas, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Geha? Yeah. Geha. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Their vineyard is really unique. It's a small vineyard. It's a family-run vineyard. They've only been around about 40 years. They also produce some spectacular award-winning wines. Their blends are pretty popular. This is actually a little bit on the higher side uh, if you're in a wine club. Um, it can be, it, this is an everyday wine. I mean, one of the reasons this won an award was because it's such a good blend that this is the kind of wine, it doesn't matter if it's spring, summer, fall, or winter, you can drink this and enjoy it with a host of different food. Those were the tasting notes. Whether or not they match up to our experience right here, and whether or not Bobby P got ripped off, we're about to find out. <laughs> so you're trying this blind? Oh yeah, these. Okay. Uh, that's why I'm. Yep, absolutely blind. Right. And once again, that just shows you the difference between Bob and I and our approach to this show. I'd like to do my homework and try the wine before the show, and, and you like showing up with something you've never had before. Yeah, I do. Tasting blind. And I'm glad I did because this is completely different, I think, than the one we just tasted. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure it's good or bad, but it's completely different. A much better mouthfeel with this. It, it kind of fills the mouth a little bit more. Um, I'm getting some kind of, uh, some great acidity with this. It's, it's muted, but it's, uh, you know, it's not like the, the Vino Verde we had to begin with. I would, I would probably say that it is filling your mouth up a little I bit more. I would agree flavor, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Which some people like. Not everybody does, but some people like that when they're drinking a blend. Staying with me a little longer. Yeah, oh, definitely. Prior one. It is definitely yeah. staying with you longer. It has a little bit more of a uh, aroma than the first mm -hmm. one. I don't think the legs are as heavy on this one. No. No, they're not. But I get some black cherry with this now, yeah. too. I would agree it's, with that. That's what I was picking up on, some cherry. I actually mm -hmm. prefer this one to the, the California um, because I think it's... What maybe, if it had a blue label? Oh, oh it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, superficial. <laughs> you know, I did the this. It is the big, bold red. I left yes. an opening. It I is left the an opening red. right there. No, but... Uh, no, I... <laughs> I do. I prefer it because I think it is a little bit of stronger taste. It's totally subjective, but it reminds me a little bit of, this may be way off, but almost like a Shiraz type flavor. Yeah. I can see that. And mm -hmm. Actually, that might be one yes. of... You've been on this show before. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm not sure what the blends are in this pickling wine because it's not in the actual notes, but uh, it, it, it has exactly what you're talking about. This is the kind of wine I think that would probably be better dr uh, drinking with food. I think the first California Red you can drink on its own mm -hmm. and sip. I think this one might pair a little bit better with some food because it's so strong and it's so mouth-filling palate-wise that it, my mouth is still a little tingly right yeah. now. Yeah, but you bring up an interesting point. A lot of times when you buy these red blends, you don't know what is going into it. They, they don't put the grape varietals they on don't the have bottle to. That's and right. they don't have to. And you go to their website and sometimes they list it and sometimes they don't. So you're not sure you know, which grapes you're getting you know, if you're looking for something that has a lot of cab and just a little Merlot, uh, you, you're not going to know that just by looking at the bottle. And, you know, I did some research again, like I said, when I get the wines in, because they give you a little history of the vineyard. And this wine does not tell you what the, the actual makeup mm -hmm. is. And once again, California, they don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a percentage. I know Connecticut's the same way with the Connecticut wines. They, if, it, if they have to list the percentages of the wines, that, or the grape varietals that go into a certain type of wine, California wines don't have to do that if they call themselves a California red blend. Yeah. So you're not sure what you're getting, which in a way is kind of fun because it's a good way to, uh, like we're doing tonight, going in blind. It's a complete different experience for the taste. So I like it. I like it. I mean, I, I might go better with some of that spicy sausage, but, you know, I, I'm not going to have one right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through all these and then we can do some food pairings if we have time left.
And I, I have to throw out some bipartisanship and say I agreed with Chris. <laughs> no contention here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this you know lubricates everything. Well, you know, wine is a great community. Bring her together. You know, yeah. they, it's, it's it's what wine does. It brings everybody together. <laughs> so, I'm going to give that one a thumbs up, but just a little down more from the first. So, like uh, a three quarter thumb. Yeah, I'll go with the three okay. quarter. I'll go with the three right. quarter. A three quarter thumb. And this yeah. is an example. This is a pricier wine. This is between sixty nine nine and eighteen ninety nine. And the other red was a little cheaper. So you can never go by price when it comes to a wine. No. Mm. And uh, what was your thoughts there? I'll go. I'll go <clears throat> thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Yes, I, I did prefer it over the the other red, but personal taste. So you're skewing towards the red side of the table. <laughs> I guess. Although there is, I may add, a blue label on the, the back of this. <laughs> there, there it's is. More of a purple. Labeling, uh, but remember, it's a bipartisan yeah. wine. Yeah, but I think it's kind so. of like Ohio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but remember, Chris, you got to remember the title, Big Bold Red. That's right. So, all right, Jim, we're ready for the Hess. All right, last up, this is Hess Select. This is they label this a Cabernet Sauvignon, but it is a red blend. Uh, this is seventy-five percent Cabernet Sauvignon. It's got a little Merlot, a little Malbec, a little Petite Syrah, and a little Syrah. So just a smattering of everything else in here. So you actually were able to find that out yes. ahead of time. Yeah, this yeah, has listed that on their website. It's not on the bottle, but you can look that up on their website and find out what exactly they put into this particular blend. But uh, again, you're going back to what you're talking about, California and their labeling laws, and they're not calling this a red blend. They're calling it a Cabernet Sauvignon. So it has to be, I think, 70% cab that's what to it get is. that on the label. You can call it a cab, but it has to have a certain percentage. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. So give this a try. Um, this, you know, when I, I look at the legs here, I think this is, is much more similar to the first red we had. You know, the, the legs are long, lingering, got a lot of body to it. Um, this is 13.9% alcohol, so that's going to boost the body up for this. That might be the highest one tonight, yeah. I think. I think the two reds that I have were about 13.5. So leave it to Jim to bring the higher alcoholic uh, content. You know my red. style. I do. <laughs> this, this tastes a little lighter. To, to add a, to I actually off thought so said, too. It, it's yeah. lighter than it's than the, the one we just had. Yes, yeah, you're right. Although it's got a little more tannin to it, um, it's drying my mouth out now at the end. Um, but it's you're right. I think uh, if we were to drink these in order, I, I would have switched those two. Hmm. And Hess is a brand that I'm sure most people, a lot of people that drink wine are familiar with. Um, you know, they're pretty prominent in a lot of the stores. Um, they actually have a good reputation. I mean, they their, do. their wines are, are yeah, really a good. Good vineyard, uh, lot, and like you were saying, lots, lots of distribution. You'll find this just about everywhere. And you'll see in a lot of selections on, on wine menus and restaurants too, mm -hmm. I think, Hess. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it, the interesting about this one is I, I think it does remind me more of the first one. Mm -hmm. It sort of is a little bit smoother. I think the big, bold red filled my mouth up with red joy. <laughs> and the first blue and the last one sort of chilled it out. Mm -hmm. That's it. The Chilling. moderates. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, there's the line of the night, the moderates. That's pretty funny. But yes, well, I, the wine is moderate. Thank you. You know, as a joke, I was going to bring so a, a the wine. the big, bold one, the Trump? Or, <laughs> there I go there. Yeah. Or, right, you got a, a Trump, what a Kashik here. Okay. <laughs> is, that, is that what we're looking at? Is that what we're looking at here? You know what I the wanted to find was a, a wine with a purple label. And put that right in the middle. Oh, you're right. That's that would have worked out. But it's so funny that the you Bloomberg. said the, the, yes, the Bloomberg. Yes, <laughs> a very expensive bottle. It's yeah. <laughs> I, I, love the, I love the moderate because it actually does pretty much sum up what I'm thinking about for two of the reds. It's very easy and simple to drink. It's not too complex, and it's not making you overanalyze the wine. So I, I think the Hess and the and the blue label um, were some two of my favorites. Not that there's not a place for the big bold red because there always is a place for a big bold red, but um, for tonight I think. The Hess and the uh, Sauvignon were my favorites. Well, we do need to try these wines with food. We do. And, and the Hess, actually, one of the recommended pairings for Hess was some kind of spicy sauce. Which we so have. I think the, the spicy sausage will work out here. This is a Louisiana hot sausage. And a uh, little Cajun spice is in there. So I think uh, that should go very well with a little sip. And right. a lot of the reds on the table tonight would probably go very well with hot spicy sausage or a good burger on the grill, maybe with a little jalapeno. Um, that's always my favorite when I'm making a burger, a little jalapeno in it. Yeah, my very educated palate was was actually grasped by your comment that this goes really well with burgers. That was the lasting impression <laughs> I've had. You were exactly right about yeah. that, and that's about where my some of the best French wines be. will go with burgers. That's not a problem with yeah. that. <laughs> Do you want me to pass? What's you a, a Slifka burger? What's a 
what would be your, your idea? Now that I'm over 40, it's yeah. very basic. Okay. Uh, you know, no cheese. It's, uh, uh, well, I do, no, I do, I do splurge on the, um, the ones that the typically at Whole Foods with the bacon and the cheese inside it. That way I convince myself I didn't actually put cheese on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fooled myself. I like the way you're thinking. Exa- it's a bacon cheeseburger that I fooled myself into thinking it's just a plain <laughs> patty. So. Yeah, that goes well. The uh, it's a mild spice, but mm-hmm. the uh, the red sort of tempers it out really nicely. And it's it's the, generally in the summertime. I love grilling sausages, spicy sausages on the grill, and pairing it with a nice mild red. Even a pinot noir, though a pinot noir might be too light with a, a spicy sausage. I think that would get overpowered. Yeah, I agree with you. But the Hess does go very nicely with the sausage. It does. That was one of the big recommendations. Uh, something else you could pair with this is a pork tenderloin. And, you know, usually when I think pork tenderloin, I think Pinot Noir. Uh, but this, I could see this working with a pork tenderloin as well. So I have a little announcement here because, Jim, uh, you know, with last month we did the Girl Scout cookie show. And they did not have, we didn't have the time to have one of my favorite cookies, which is the trefoil, which I love a shortbread cookie. Uh, maybe it's part of my English ancestry, maybe a little bit more. I have no idea. <laughs> if, even if I have any English it's ancestry. All genetic. But I've heard that the trefoil goes extremely well with a red. Really? So let's try. It's not I, actually on the box. Itself, it's not on right? the box. The, girl, the Girls' Scouts. <laughs> <scouts, laughs> uh, 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 they, maybe they should. But very yeah. good disclaimer. It, it, it's a very good disclaimer. <laughs> well, we're going to have to do a second Girl Scout cookie show. We got such good response to that from everyone who's who's been tuning in and watching it, and we only had time to do four cookies and four wines. And if you know, you look at some of the recommended pairings for Girl Scout cookies. There were you know, twelve or sixteen different combinations. So. Uh, we can certainly come back and do another show next year and, and once again help the Girl Scouts out. I'm doing a quick taste here in our remaining two minutes. Thank you. I, I will never it. again look at the you know, table of Girl Scouts selling in West Harvard. Yeah, that does not again. go well at all, actually. The wine. Oh. That does okay. not. I'm sorry, Scott. Thank you. Uh, it, it, trust me, it's, it's not going to taste very good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a bad, bad the, I, I got bum, bum information. That did not go well. So the combo of no. the sausage and the girls' cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Another pairing. You want to make a little sandwich? <laughs> I, I think oh. I was misled big yeah. time online. Yeah, that was, that's not good. That is horrible. <laughs> so it doesn't work. Don't, don't believe everything you see online. <laughs> Foiled again by the Girl Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's not good. It might go good with the white, but it does not go good with the red. Uh, by white, you mean a glass of milk? You know, <laughs> yes, probably a glass of milk, the two folds. So my shortbread love has been tarnished, and I can never have a more shortbread again, cookie with a glass of wine. That's very unfortunate. Well, there was an appropriate pairing for it, and I, I don't recall it offhand, but they, they did list trefoils <clears throat> and then a wine to go with it. They did, but uh, I, you know, before tonight, before we came in the show tonight, I did some research because I wanted to pair that cookie, and they said a red goes very well with the trefoil. A red blend. Just a... Maybe it was a different... Maybe it was a oh. Pinot Noir or something. Well, whatever, it didn't work, so do your own research and decide, but do not eat the <laughs> Under no circumstances. Under no circumstances with a red wine, you will regret it, and uh, it's going to take me at least an hour after the show's filmed to get over the, yeah. the experience. Yeah. Unless but, you have nothing else in the house. <laughs> but I want to thank, uh, thank Mayor Scott Slipper for joining us. Thank it's been you, way been too an, long. I'm glad you finally been an honor to show. be on. Thank you. Our, going in our fifth year, and Chris Williams, I think you're the, you're the champ. You're, this is your fifth, experience, fifth appearance on the show. Thank God. It's the secret of success. Well, yeah. you could add a little you. bit more excitement with that. Say, yahoo! <laughs> yes, why didn't <laughs> I'm very happy. I love the show. <laughs> thank you very much, Chris. It's been a joy for having you. Thanks for show. having me on, guys. Appreciate <clears throat> it. And uh, Jim, as always, thank you for coming down from Boston to film. I know you're a busy man, and I appreciate you coming down, so thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here every time. So uh, join Mayor Scott Slivka, Chris Williams, me and Jim at the Mayor's Ball. And until next time, keep us... Meet us. Or meet us at, at the, the Mayor's, Mayor's Ball. Ball.